One of the things uh, that I can tell you that young people today uh, did not get to see was the devastation, was the amount of, of um, horrific stigma that was out there. The marches, um, the signs uh, that said die, die, die. Uh, they didn't see how if it weren't for many individuals with AIDS walking in the streets and demanding care and demanding that the government do something, there probably would not have been a whole lot done. You wouldn't hear some of the, the rhetoric echoed in the churches and the, the ministers in the churches would stand up there and, and literally tell anyone who uh, in the congregation that had AIDS that they were going to hell. And that's what you would hear over and over again, that you're going to hell. If you have this, it's your fault. So you can just imagine that people who were infected sitting in the church who were African-American may were absolutely afraid to tell anyone they had HIV and AIDS. And I took care of many young African-American men who had never told their families that they had AIDS and died without ever telling their families. And, and that was not uncommon at all. By the mid-90s, there was at least a, a, a minor shift but it was, the minor shift to me was palpable. It was enough to say that people were talking about it and people were no longer afraid to say HIV or AIDS. In 1996, uh, what happened was these new, this new class of medications called protease inhibitors came along. And when that happened, we literally saw people um, that used to call the Lazarus Syndrome coming back from the dead. And so they, they had incredible immune rebound, which allowed their immune system to bounce back. And so they began to gain their weight back and, and look fairly healthy so they can live a fairly, you know, quote unquote normal life. I am very concerned of that because we have taken our eyes off, off of this and we have treated this as yesterday's news, that as a country we have underestimated uh, what the impact this is going to have when all these individuals are now elderly and have to rely on Medicare. Um, to provide their health care to them. And I'm not so sure with the talk about the, the challenges and the sustainability of Medicaid and Medicare that we are ready as a country. And so all of these young people now getting infected should be alarmed, should be concerned as to whether or not it will Medicare or Medicaid as we know it will even be there for them. It is killing um, African American women. Uh, middle-aged. Uh, we see older adults who are getting newly infected with HIV, those who are 50 and older, particularly middle-aged women who may be divorcees and are no longer worried about getting pregnant. And they're back on the dating scene now. And we're seeing now a huge amount of increase of new cases among middle-aged women who are no longer worried about uh, uh, getting pregnant and they're getting infected. But when you talk to young people, and I, have, I spent a lot of time talking to them and other folks, you still get the sense that they believe that this is a gay disease. Um, and it shocks me to hear this generation still saying that because they weren't even alive when uh, this, this first became an issue in this country.